mabuhay. You're listening to Faith and Society Unplugged, a podcast where we have meaningful conversations on faith and society. This podcast is a safe space for discourse and biblical reflections on social and cultural issues so that you, our listeners, could make and take your own stand on these topics. Tonight, our conversation will be on millennial stake on the martial law. You're listening to Faith and Society and Plug with me, Marie Free. Ito pong podcast na to ay sinimulan namin para naman magkaroon ng space yung mga kagaya ko na millennials na gustong pag-usapan sa lain yung mga iniisip natin so that we arrive at the best possible stance kasi crucial itong mga issues na mga hinaharap natin. So ngayong gabi, ang pag-uusapan natin ay martial law. Ang lagi nilang sinasabi, wala naman kayo ng history na yun, kaya hindi nyo naiintindihan. So wala kayong alam. Nako, uh, dapat ba ganun talaga or... Meron din tayong stake at claim sa issue na ito. And if we do have a stake and claim, saan tayo lulugar? Ano yung dapat na uh, stand natin? Alright. Sa loob ng isa't kalahating taon, naging bahagi namin kayo sa ating weekly live show ng Isip Isak. Kaya naman kami rito sa Isaac ay lubos na nagpapasalamat sa suporta na binigay ninyo sa aming show. Parte ng aming advokasiya sa Isaac. Through Isip Isak ay mag-educate ng mga faith-based communities at makabuo ng isang hermeneutical community. O oh, teka, masyadong mabigat yung word na hermeneutical community. Ang ibig sabihin lamang nito ay isang grupo ng mga tao who are reading the Bible at the same time, reading the times. Ito yung mga tao na may pagkakaunawa na hindi lamang Biblia ang dapat tignan, kundi yung issue din ng lipunan. At of course, dadalhin natin yung presensya ng Diyos sa issue ng lipunan through our very careful analysis of the Bible and the social issues that we are facing. This podcast is a response to our growing curiosity on how we can make sense of our faith and everyday expression of religion and spirituality while we handle issues and matters associated with our contemporary lives. So speaking of contemporary life, isa sa mga issues na kinahaharap ng mga kapwa kong millennials ay itong debate on why should martial law matter to millennials. Kung pinag-uusapan ang martial law at EDSA 1, Usually, millennials or people born after EDSA 1 are confronted with the argument, di pa kayo pinanganak ng martial law, so why should you care? O di naman kaya, anong alam nyo? Bakit nga ba? Tara, pag-usapan natin ito. Tonight, we will be joined by fellow millennials and Christians. Siyempre, mga millennials ang ating makakasama ngayong gabi. Ang isa ay associate lawyer sa isang law firm, habang ang isa naman ay pastor at entrepreneur. They are both member of Isaac's family or of Isaac's community, and we are so grateful that they have given us time kahit busy sila sa kanilang schedule. So, allow me to introduce our guest, Attorney Chil Bahira and Pastor Ian Diocampo. Magandang gabi sa inyong dalawa. Hello sa lahat. Hi to everyone, to our listeners and viewers. All right. We are so delighted to have the both of you dito sa ating show ngayong gabi. And before we delve into our conversation, would you like to briefly introduce by yourselves para naman mas nakilala kayo ng ating mga listeners at ng ating mga viewers? Simulan natin kay Attorney Chill. Attorney Chill? Hi. So yeah, I'm I'm a lawyer, but um for purposes of our discussion, you can just call me Chill ngayong oras na to. And as uh, mentioned by Joy, by Marie, uh ako ay post martial law baby, millennial. So I think that's it. <laughs> Salamat. Anong gear ka ba pinanganak? Sige, wag ano, in between na lang. Between 1986, uh, 1990, or 1991, 1995? ABCD. <laughs> <C, D. laughs> <laughs> Saan? Mga anong, ano, anong, anong year in between? 1990, 1995 ba, Tony Chill? Hindi naman. Uh, 1990 ako. Ah, okay, okay lang naman sabihin. So, para okay. makarelate, di ba? So, kung may ka-age ako na nakikinig, so, makakarelate sila. Nice. Akala ko conscious ka kasi kasi may iba na conscious. Ako din hindi ako conscious. I was born 87. So, talagang hindi ko naabutan ng martial law. May hindi pa ako. Wala pa yung kaluluwa ko sa earth. Sige. Uh, Ian, would you like to share more about yourself? Ako naman, uh, inabot na ng martial law, pero walang malay. <laughs> Oo. Kakapanganak ko lang nun, nung, nung mga last, nung last year. 
Wow. Uh-huh. So, at least buhay ka na. <laughs> buhay <laughs> na, pero na walang alam. <laughs> <laughs> Tama. Okay. So, let me go straight to our question one. No? Yun nga yung lagi nilang sinasabi. Wala naman kayo nung hindi nyo naman alam. Uh, ang, bilis nyo, ang bilis daw natin magsalita. No? So, we are always confronted with that argument. Hindi kayo pinanganak or pinanganak man kayo, wala pa kayong malay. Ano naman ang alam niyo When you hear this type of um, of of arguments no especially pagka outspoken kayo ng mga binabato sa iyo anong nararamdaman niyo or anong naiisip niyo sige simulan natin kay uh, Pastor Ian Anong alam ko well to be to be fair sa mga nagsasabi na w- w- anong alam mo wala naman talaga ako nung time na yun pero at the same time hindi siya hindi ka walang alam di ba kasi Merong kang merong history that that came that we have studied, merong his merong mga documents, merong mga actual events uh, and people who went through it. So hindi siya hindi sa walang alam pero uh, hindi ko siya inaabot. Pero may alam ako. Kumbaga, in the same way na kumbaga sa kung sa Bible ganyan. Hindi ko naman inaabot yung panahon ng Bible pero pwede kong aralin yung yung history, yung documents, yung yung archaeology and all these uh, things that were happening during the time. I see. Okay. Uh, sige, I want to hear Attorney Chell. Pag naririnig mo yun, Attorney Chell, ano yung pumapasok sa isip mo? Um, similar, no? Pero siguro mas um, layman illustration. Like for instance, family history natin, di ba? So our parents would sometimes give us accounts of what happened during the times of our lolo and lola. And most of, more often than not, yung mga stories nila would matter to us, would also help us like in, in how we go forward sa family, sa family traditions natin. So in the same way, ganun din, with the history of martial law, which is considered as a very significant period in our history, di ba? or in our in our nation for for us Filipinos. So it's important for us to study about it, to listen to accounts. Meron pa naman like si Ian, o buhay na pala siya noon, 'di ba? So pwede pwede niyang patanong yung yung accounts ng mga tao na nandoon sa sa period na 'yon for us to know about what really happened or stories ng na mga nangyari. So um hindi naman kailangan na present ka for you to be able to say na relevant sa iyo yung particular moment in time na, na pinag-uusapan natin ngayon. So, yeah, it's important for us to really um, study about our history, specifically about martial law. Well, totoo yan. Ako ang nakifeel ko naman pag sinasabi yun, nade-disempower ako. Feeling ko parang mm-hmm. hindi, parang wala ako, na it's a pwera ako sa conversation. Yan yung nakifeel ko pag sinasabi yun, na parang, ah, okay, And sometimes yung disempowerment, uh, nakaka pag pag inalaw mo kasi yun na magtake sa 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 frame mo, sa framework mo, sa mindset mo, nawawalan ka din ng stake dun sa bagay. So for example, pag sinasabi na di wala ka pa naman ng martial law, para ang nangyayari, yung martial law part lang siya ng days gone by na wala ka pa history siya sa bansa mo, pero hindi wala kang personal claim. So for me it's very disempowering. Um, Siguro simulan natin. Kung ibabato naman natin sa kanila or sasabihin natin sa kanila na eh history pa rin namin 'yan kasi Pilipino kami kahit wala kami niyan so dapat nandiyan pa rin kami. Ah uh, ano naman yung responses niyo sa mga nagsasabi no? But the history that you know is a botched history. It's a history sa textbooks na uh, na nasinulat lang. You know what they say ah uh, um the 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 hunter gets to to tell the story no kasi yung lion would not be able to write the story of the hunting pero of course the one the more powerful is really the beast pero yung kaya magsulat ng ng narrative yung tao so parang ang sinasabi nila eh botched yan eh kumbaga it's a it's a it's a it's a manipulated type of history yung pinalakihan natin na well let's say let's be honest na medyo mas leaning towards the Aquino narrative kesa sa 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 narrative ng mga Marcoses no or or the 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 the, the, the liberal party narrative kesa sa narrative ng mga ng, ng party nila Marcos. Ano ang masasabi niyo sa ganun na pag sinasabi sa atin na eh, yung alam niyo naman ano naman 'yan eh manipulated history or um, sifted na history. Anong anong naiisip ninyo? Anong anong response niyo sa ganun? Uh, well 
the history as written by the victor yun yung isang ano di ba mm-hmm. yung yung isang quote well in a sense merong merong truth doon na the history books are written by by the victors or those who are in power but the thing is we have been in also in a democracy and hindi siya yung 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 documents that we have are not just from one side it's also from from all sides of ano of the story actually marami ring documents na historical documents na writing the version of uh, of Marcos di ba and hindi lang siya documents actually ang mga kwento namin uh, pati mga kwento ng mga lolo't lola namin uh, kwento ng mga encounters nung ng mga panahon na sila ay actual actual victims ganyan so it's not just uh, those who are in power who are writing history it's also those from 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 the margins no yung mga uh, and actually yung mga yung mga makikilala mong may kwento hanggang ngayon hindi naman sila in power eh nasa mm. nandiyan pa rin sila sa laylayan at uh, hanggang ngayon marami sa kanila nag-suffer and hanggang ngayon nagsasuffer pa rin di ba That's right. So hindi lang dahil nabasa natin sa history books. We have mm-hmm. real people who have real stories to tell. Oh, and, and, and in them. fact, in fact sa school pa nga mas parang neglected pa nga yung martial law eh, kasi maikling part na lang siya sa history kumbaga sa curriculum dahil holding part siya ng history. Parang yan yung minamadaling part eh. Mas mm-hmm. pinag pinagbibigyan pansin yung syempre yung Spanish colonial and American eh yung martial law ano na yan eh minadaling part na yan sa sa school. So uh, unfair pa nga yun sa 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 history books na natin no? na yung martial law yun na lang yun. Uh, ayun. Right, right. The turn chill. Mm-hmm. Yeah, totoo yun na kasi depende kung kaninong narrative tayo makikinig, di ba? Pero mas inclined ako to listen to testimonials or stories nga. Um even the books that we have Uh, sino lang din ba kasi yung may access usually, no? even sa mga educational books na meron tayo, mas marami pa rin sa mga Pilipino, hindi naman talaga nabibigyan ng karampatang oras to read all those books. Mm-hmm. Like even millennials right now, um, pwedeng hindi naman recommended reading, ano mo, practically speaking, hindi naman siya recommended reading for everyone. It's up to you to, to get your hand on that book and read, di ba? And it's also up to you to uh, choose which author or which story you'd like to research on. So um, it's also important for us, lalo na tayong millennials, like me, I, I took time to ask my lolo and lola or my mom, paano sila noon. So they are able to give accounts din naman. So that can be a starting point for us to know kung saan tayo kukuha ng mga resources or kanino tayo makikinig for us to have that historical background or the proper historical background na, na kailangan natin, especially dun sa era na pinag-uusapan natin. That's right. Thank you for that, Attorney Chill and Pastor Ian. So I'm just wondering, no? this is a... Kasi sinasabi nila na, okay, sabi mo Ian, nandito ka na nun, pinanganak ka na nun, pero wala ka pang pabumuang. Kami naman ni Atty. Jill, talagang post-martial law babies. No? At sarap pakinggan, parang ang bata ko. <laughs> anyway, um, I wonder, ano yung, uh, when you started to learn about the martial law history, which is not a history of this that past, di ba? Recently, recent history lang natin talaga ito, to be honest. And so recent that many of those who have experienced this, fresh pa yung wounds, no? Pero for us, who have just learned this sa school or because we are celebrating yung holidays, ay, walang paso kasi Ninoy Aquino Day. So, ah, bakit nga ba may Ninoy Aquino Day? So, doon lang natin natututunan to ng mga bata tayo. When you began to learn this, when you began to grasp yung truth ng martial law, kailan to? Anong grade ka? <laughs> ano, i-date natin. Anong grade ka? At ano yung naaalala mo na storya that really um grasp you you grasp it and and na realize mo shocks ito pala yung weight ng history na to sa aming bayan sa aming pagka-Pilipino so you maybe let's hear attorney chill first hindi ko maalala kung nung grade school may mga readings about this parang wala to pero nung college yan nung college kasi may mga like i said prescribed 
well, well, subjects na prescribe yung mga books, for example, ni Teodoro Agoncillo, mm-hmm. yung ganyan, Renato mm-hmm. Constantino. So, you're, you're able to get your hands on materials. No? Pero, sa akin personally, mas nag-appreciate ko siya like when I go to, uh, let's say, museums where I see pictures, yung mm-hmm. photos, kung saan nakasulat doon yung mga account, what really happened, yung mga victims ng marsh Shado, kung ano yung mga nangyari. So, doon ko siya mas na-appreciate. Or maybe because I'm a visual type of person na mas nagkakaroon ako na interest doon sa isang bagay when I see like photographs of it. So, yeah, it was starting college onwards. Doon ko siya mas sinubukang uh, unawain. Um, mas naging intentional ako in also asking around what really happened during that time and ano yung mga effects no dun sa mga taong kilala ko na buhay pa ngayon. So, yun. Ayun. Salamat, Attorney Chill. So, college si Attorney Chill nun. And uh, sa kaalaman ng lahat, si Attorney Chill po ay nag-college sa UP. So, <laughs> ano yan, talagang part yan ng, uh, ng, ng, ng curriculum, no, ng sistema. Sige, si Pastor Ian, kailan mo na-grasp yung, yung importance ng martial sa history natin? Actually, same eh, kay, kay Chill. Um, We were in college sa UP and uh, getting to... Kasi ako sa art studies naman, mm-hmm. I was able to visit museums rin, ganun, um, talk to mm-hmm. people. And, and in fact, uh, ano, yung, one of the museums that I visited was uh, yung Bantayog ng Bayani um, mm-hmm. in, in Quezon Avenue where nandun yung mga, yung mga kwento, nandun yung mga mural, mga documents... Um, and even the tour guide was a was a victim of martial law. So, and truth encounter siya with with an actual person, de ba? So, so kwento niya yung yung mga pinagdaanan niya, pinakita niya yung yung mga through the ano through the walls of the museum, pinakita niya yung yung kwento ng martial law. Um, I think that's that made a huge impact. Uh, before that, there were movies. Um, that would ano syempre yung mga pelikulang pinanonood namin um, when i was younger na may naalala ko yung escape uh, mm-hmm. ba diba? so yon siguro isa yon sa ano sa yun yung mga siguro yung pag pagkaalam ko sa martial law hindi siya one time lang so yun merong merong kwento tungkol doon nung movie nung bata ako tapos yung yung sa university where you get to encounter uh, history and yun visit museums uh, meet people and yung mga professors mo sila mismo mga biktima <laughs> uh, mm-hmm. and uh, among others no uh, later on in life mas nagiging totoo siya syempre nung ano itong recent years na nakikita mo na parang teka parang umuulit ah <laughs> diba yung ganun mm-hmm. uh-huh. That's right. Ako naman, sa high school, medyo mas maaga ng konti, uh, dekada si Tenta, nirequire kami na basahin yung novel na yon ni Luwalhati Bautista. And I remember, um, I've been, you know, may, may part kasi sa curriculum din ng high school namin noon na, na, na na-touch din yung history ng martial law. Pero meron akong cognitive dissonance noon kasi ang lahi namin ay mga Ilocano. So, marami ang pamag-anak na mga loyalista. So, parang feeling ko na, I'm trying to reconcile what I read in the books, what I see in uh, the media, tapos kung ano yung sinasabi sa akin na personal narrative ng mga kamag-anak ko na tahimik nga daw. Uh, ang naaalala ko ang sinabi ng isa sa mga tita ko nang sabi niya, basta sumunod ka, hindi ka naman maapektuhan or hindi ka naman mapapahama basta sumunod ka sa batas yan ang lagi nilang sinasabi ng diba pero uh, I think as I got to meet people especially those who have experienced this like yung isa sa best friend ko simple lang to yung tatay niya uh, naabutan ng curfew uh, binugbog ng mga polis eh, wala namang ginagawang masama yung tatay niya was a student sa letran during that time no Matanda na siya ngayon. <laughs> Pero yun yung, uh, so may, may kwento na gano'n, nakakarilig ako. Tapos I'm trying to, you know, as a millennial, kasi ang pinag-usapan nga natin dito, eh wala daw tayong historical context. no So as a millennial, trying to uh, navigate or make sense of this 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 part of our lives as Filipino, pinagtatagni-tagni ko yun, pinatahitahi ko yung mga kwentong personal, yung, yung nabasa ko sa nobela, yung nakikita ko sa mga dokumentaryo at napapanood ko sa TV sa tuwing uh, inaalala ang martial law. Um, I'm trying to 
to reconcile that into into a one whole knowledge na may harmony pero hindi eh. talagang there are two uh, camps and there are two sides but i think what will really um give us the truth or at least a sense of truth is alin dito yung katotohanan Ka- kaninong kwento yung kaninong naratibo yung may 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 ebidensya yung may may suporta ng history talaga na at at when we say na history records meaning yung mga uh, pagtinig na natin like diba attorney sa CHR uh, may friend ako na parang part siya ng parang paralegal lang siya doon pero sabi niya pag naraman mo yung kwento ng mga claimants ng 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 benefits for those who have been um victimized by martial law maiiyak ka grabe yung torture na naginawa sa kanila. So I think pag sinasabi nila na wala tayong claim or wala tayong stay, parang hindi, ako personally I don't agree with that. Kasi kwento natin yun bilang mga Pilipino and at the same time, hindi naman yung distant pa, hindi naman hundreds of years ago yan. This is just what? How many years ago? Just few uh, decades ago. So sabi ko nga, sariwa pa yung sugat. Pero yeah, uh, I just want to follow up on that to to ask you on that when you hear na uh yung historical context the, when people say na uh, we need more historical context as millennials where would you place yourself there or maybe the question would be if wala kami historical context feeling ng mga mas matatanda sa amin ano ang pwede nilang itulong para mas magkaroon tayo ng footing sa history na to na hindi siya uh na ma- ma- meron talaga siyang yung yung lessons niya na sa atin pa rin ng mga ng mga kabataan niya what what would you what, what do you think should the people who have the historical context have lived that history what do you think they could do to help us have our firm footing on this ang um, naalala ko diyan like sila uh, mga historian natin pwede mo sabihin like sa Isaac di ba sila Ms. Fe mga has ma mahilig silang magkwento kasi talaga So because it's really close to their heart what happened they were there they witnessed not if not all if not most all of really what transpired during that period they really share it to younger ones at hindi sila nagsasawang ikwento yon so um maybe it depends on how significant that period of time was for those who were living during that moment kung paano nila makita na mahalaga pa lang ipasa yung kwento. Pero on hindsight, iniisip ko kasi it varies din eh. Yung pinag-uusapan natin kanina na how you formulate the narrative. It depends on the perspective of the person, di ba? So, medyo, for me, ano, um, delikado rin naman kung magre-rely lang tayo dun sa mga narrations or testimonials. But that's also important for us to start somewhere. Um, So sa akin kung merong magsasabi na so hindi mo naman kasi alam so ako I would try to ask so sige ano yung mga naranasan mo um for me to be able to engage that person and start that person talking para naman makita niya na mahalaga para sa amin kung ano yung naranasan niyo before so might as well try to share with us di ba so without necessarily banking my entire historical context dun sa kwento ng isang tao so yun Um, and it's also important for us to look into documents. Iba sabi, no documents, no history. Mayroon nagsabi na doon na pag wala tayong makitang evidence, hindi natin talaga masasabi yung history siya. So like what you're saying kanina, Marina, alala ko yung mga uh, stories ng mga victims or even ngayon yung very controversial, hindi lang ngayon, pero yung issue on the ill-gotten wealth. Hindi naman yan kwentong kotsero. May mga dokumento yan. In fact, Supreme Court decisions hindi siguro related to my profession. So parang sa akin, mas, mag, mas, ano siya, mas um, distinct sa akin na question na, oh, meron na mga accounts, malinaw na accounts, meron na mga decisions, final decisions in fact, that says meron talaga mga nawala, nasa na. So yun, reliance on evidence and documents also mahalaga bukod dun sa mga testimonies of people. But again, we can start somewhere by asking the older generation to to share with us their stories. I love that. Ang ganda nun, attorney. So, yung kwento, but not just the kwento, you look at documents. 
and historical evidences. Nako, so hindi talaga pwedeng TikTok lang mag-rely, no? Baka dapat kahit pa paano magbasa-basa talaga ng history books or hindi lang history books. Alam mo si CJ Sereno, hello po CJ Melo, kung mapanood niyo to, I really love what she's doing kasi um, binababa niyo, hindi, sorry, not binababa, inilalapit niya sa kamalayan ng mga ordinaryong tao, yung mga Supreme Court decision by making um, uh, infographics on it. She has a team that makes infographics on it. And then therefore, mas madaling na kukonsume ng publiko. Mas na-educate sila. So yan, salamat doon, attorney. Ian, ikaw, ano sa tingin mo yung, ano yung response mo doon? Ano yung dapat gawin ng mga may lived experience ng martial law para hindi tayo ma-alienate, para mayroon din tayong grasp or, or, or we have a we have a, a, an understanding of that history. Yan. Actually, yun. Um, ikwento nila. Um, pero ang isang tingin kong pagkukulang right now is maraming kwento, mm. maraming books, mm. um, may mga documentaries you have uh, yung movie ni Ramona Diaz which was like early early a few years ago and then you have movies like The Kingmaker na recently na parang repeat nung mm-hmm. kay Ramona Diaz um, both are award winning pero hindi sila accessible kumbaga we need uh, movies like that documentaries like that um, avenues where na, na napapanood siya ng mga tao na hindi Ang, ang hirap kasi hanapin kung saan mapanood yung dalawang movie niyo, for example. Or we have museums, di ba? Um, like Bantayog and I've been to uh, several exhibits na may, may work of art ng, about, mm. uh, about martial law. Pero hindi rin ganun accessible yung mga art na to or yung mga museums na to. Uh, we, have to we have to make them available sa public, mm-hmm. uh, available, easily uh, easy to visit, easy to watch, easy to read, um, comics, mm-hmm. ganyan, siguro, or or something similar uh, in Instagram, kung social media na nga pala tayo, hindi, <laughs> diba? uh, at y- yun, uh, accessibility is one uh, one key na, na, mm-hmm. na, na kailangan natin ma- ma- makita. Yung, yung Kumbaga, may mga kwento nga tayo from personal uh, friends siguro kakilala natin pero pero at the same time yung sinasabi ni Chill ng mga documents na yan mas magi mas ma- makikita yan ng mga tao in a, in a more digestible uh, medium sana na mas an uh, madaling ma-, ma ma-access na medium di ba That's right um, well, I have a special question for you, Ian, kasi you, you are, you know, art studies major, tapos ito nga, yung tinutumbok mo na maging accessible yung mga museums, mga pelikula. By the way, yung Kingmaker sa mga nanonood nyo yun, kung hindi nyo pa napapanood yun, paano orin ninyo? Hindi ko alam paano kayo mataka-access. I only had access because of a friend, no? Uh, mas ma-recommend ko pa yung, yung mas ma-recommend ko pa yung kay, ano, kay Ramona Diaz. Ano yung title nun? Uh, Imelda. <laughs> Ah, Imelda. Did that come out mga 2008? Oh, mga or early, years ano, a few years ago. It's ah, actually yeah. award-winning rin. And Kingmaker seems to repeat it. Repeat lang siya. Was Parang, that the, I, th- I think I saw that pinalabas yan sa amin nung college. Kung, uh, kung mga 2007-2008. Oh, parang gano'n yan. Uh, uh, so, anyway, yeah. so may, may tanong ako sa'yo. Pero bago yun, kikwenta lang ako mabilis na context. Um, ang Isaac kasi, meron siyang kaibigan na social realist, mga, mga artist, di ba? Ang Isaac kasi talaga eh, hub din sa art ng artist ng mga 1980s, 1990s, di ba? So, mayroong social realist si Sir Adi Santos who unfortunately uh, passed away na. Pero Isaac had the privilege to parang gather his friends together and uh, nagkaroon ng parang um, uh, it was a parang eulogy pero ang nangyari ay nagbalik tanaw sila sa buhay nila bilang mga artists. So how well, mayroong part sa spirituality, how they met the Lord and how si Ate Melba uh, was there para my Bible study leader. Pero ang pinaka naka strike sa akin was when they uh refreshed yung memories nila sa martial law. Ang nangyari pala, ang daming art ng mga katulad nila Sir Adi uh, na sinunog nila. No, mga art, pieces of art na sinunog nila para hindi sila ma-implicate during the martial law. And I remember one of our attendees of that parang service, that memorial service said, 
grabe yung ginawa sa atin talaga ng, ng diktador na to. Hindi niya lang tayo pinahirapan dahil sa torture. Pero he also, and he did not just rob us of our resources sa pondo natin, but he also robbed us of our soul when we had to burn our art. And these are pieces that could have been, you know, passed on to our generation. Para mas may historical context tayo. Pero hindi nag-umabot sa atin kasi had to burn it. As an art student um, major, uh, start, uh, art studies major, yan. Bilang yan ang isa sa, sa disiplina ng buhay mo. How important is art para ipasa yung context, yung kaalaman sa mga susunod na henerasyon? Gano'ng kahalaga yan? At gano'ng natin dapat pahalagahan yung art na meron tayo na yun? about Marshall Lawson. Well, hindi lang siguro pag, sa pagiging art yung artist and art uh, art studies ko yung manggagaling yung sagot ko. Pero art kasi has a way of steering our imagination. Um, and one of the things na na ginagawa ng state during the time ni ni Marcos was to Use art also. Um, sa kanya nagsimula ang national artist, di ba? Ang CC. Uh, ginamit niya itong art and infrastructure actually to um, dampen yung imagination natin. So meron siyang way of, pwede natin siyang gamitin as aesthetic or anesthetic. Di ba, di ba anesthesia? Um, para mawalan ka ng, ng feeling or ng pag, pa, uh, pakiramdam. Ganyan. Um, yan yung anesthetic na ginamit ng state para hindi tayo mag-imagine ng 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 mga bagay na dapat pala hindi ganito. Uh, so wag natin uh, maging ano tayo, ano tayo uh, apathetic. So pero at the same time, yung meron tinatawag na na prophetic imagination, 'di ba? Si Walter Brueggemann is uh, uh, wrote the book on prophetic imagination where ang ginag ang imagination we need as artists as creatives we need to uh, steer the imagination of people na yung makita nila na yung status quo ay hindi lang ano hindi hindi lang ito ang pwedeng makamit natin ang status quo may be something that oppresses us and okay lang tayo doon tulad ng kunyari yung Israel diba they were they were happy in in Egypt ang ang role ni Moses was to steer their imagination na mayroong promised land uh, na tayong pupuntahan uh, and hindi okay yung pag-oppress sa inyo so we 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 have prophets who were steering imagination using uh, poetry using narratives like parables ni Jesus uh, those are prophetic uh, instruments to steer the imagination of people to to see beyond what they are experiencing now that there's something better and then they can they can do something beyond uh, the status quo yeah all right so mahalaga yun no Ma, na yung yung art talaga mapasa sa atin ay uh, favorite ko pa lang part sa Isaac i remember no no na akong pumasok diyan uh, pagpasok mo sa hall may nakikita ka mga um, comics no na nung panahon ni Marcos and I was thinking wow ganun sila ka 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 seryoso or ganun sila ganun kabigat yung sitwasyon that they had to uh, to to let it out through comics through art and bilang basta sulat pero talagang may, may artistic na na, na expression na ganito. Na I was thinking mangyayari kaya to sa generation ko. And you know, few months lumabas tong si um si let me just say thanks si Tarantadong Kalbo, 'di ba? And everybody mm-hmm. caught on that to me din. So I was thinking, wow, I think there's a part here where um sabi nga ni Ian, yung history ng martial law medyo nagre-repeat, no? History repeats itself. Sige, let me just um Um, shift yung gears ng conversation natin. Dito sa nangyari nung September, ang init-init at ang tagal-tagal nag-trending ng, ne- ng hashtag never again, never forget. So, now that, um, as I'm saying, at nabanggitin niya na parang umuulit yung um, yung mga events before sa panahon natin ngayon. You know, as a millennial, how do you feel about this? Or what do you think of this? Na parang may may ganitong threat and especially um you know I'll just put it out no plain out in the open yung elephant in the room na yung anak nitong 
diktador ng martial law, ay gusto nito magbongga yun. How do you feel about this? What's happening now? And then the idea of uh, never this this movement, this campaign of never again, never forget. What do you make? How do you make sense of this? Siguro si si Atorn Mitchell nuna. Yung first question ko, anong nafe-feel ko, actually kapag iisipin mo siya, tama yun eh, yung resurgence of authoritarian rule, di ba? parang ganyan yung mangyayari. Kasi ganun yung nangyayari before. Nakakatakot siya. But again, it's good for us, kung seseryosohin natin yung pinag-usapan natin ngayon for us to bank ourselves on what on our history, we will learn from the past. Um, we will be able to take note of the mistakes that happened in the past and for us to learn our lessons from there. Tapos yung hashtag na um, dati pa daw yan eh, pero tama ha, no? parang ngayon lang siya kasi mas nag-trending or maybe because ito yung nasa digital age tayo. So yung hashtag, doon naman siya sumikat, I think, tama ba ako, na sa social media talaga siya sumikat yung hashtag never again, never forget. So in a way, it makes the 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 issue trending and relevant to younger ones. Kasi tayo yung magpropel sa mga susunod na mangyayari sa bansa natin, di ba? So, nakakatakot man siya, but this serves as a reminder na, oh, teka, why, why is this happening again? Um, what can we do? Kung, kung merong threat for us na mapaperceive ma- natin na threat siya kasi posible talaga na mangyari yung nangyari in the past, which if you will look into it, even now na pandemic, no? if I can just share yung observations ko on the eagle side. Kasi, di ba, batas tayo na hindi naman talaga nasusunod ng tama. At talagang na mamanhandle yung mga tao when it comes to following. Even the simple policies, it doesn't have to be a proclamation already, but the simple policies na parang pakiramdam ko, ano ba to, uh, positioning ba to, nakikiramdam ba sila, how people are responding, how volatile is the are the people now, um, parang ganun kasi yung pakiramdam ko na nakakatakot. Pero again, if we will try to remember what happened in the past and, you know, ito yung magiging warning sign, parang red flag, di ba? <laughs> kung, kung gagawin natin siyang medyo mababaw, o oh, red flag na yung mangyayari. So, this hashtag should remind us na, teka lang, may red flags. So, let's let's, what is the lesson that we have to apply during this point in time so that the the dark moments in the past would not happen again. Kasi yun yung point ng history natin. Hindi para, o oh, ulit-ulitin na natin to, pero para meron tayong gawin so that things won't happen. Ulit. Sa, sa time That's natin. True. That's right, attorney. And I feel like uh, marami naman, no? marami sa atin na hindi papayag na maulit yung ganong uh, in your name or uh, in your main rule sa ating bayan. Sige si Pastor Ian naman. Well, sayang, sayang yung yung naisip ko parang sayang yung history. Sayang yung yung EDSA Revolution. Sayang yung pinagdaanan ng mga tao nung time na yon, mm-hmm. yung mga nag-survive and yung mga nag-initiate ng ng pagbabago. Sayang yung yung Pilipinas no parang we were already out of it uh, pero babalikan natin um kaya it's it's a crucial time in history nga uh, to to really go to really uh, make people aware um and um balikan natin hindi lang balikan pero move forward tayo yung sinasabi nila move on na may may sense pero 'di ba move on pero wag nating kakalimutan yung mga yung mga pagkakamali natin. Uh, let's move forward to a better future. Hindi yung <laughs> hindi yung move on na para pwede nating balikan yung 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 dati. Parang parang nafi-feel ko ulit yung yung sa Israel nga na 'di ba nasa yung pag-alis nila ng Egypt, nasa deserto na sila, papuntang silang promised land, tapos biglang sabi nila Papatayin mo kami dito sa sa wilderness eh. Moses, balik na lang tayo sa Egypt. <laughs> Parang, hello, slaves kayo sa Egypt. Papunta kayo sa isang uh, land na malaya kayo. Di ba? So, wag natin sanang kalimutan na meron better place uh, than where we are now. 
Actually, maganda yung uh, point mo, Pastor Ian. No? If I may just add to that, I'm going to ask Attorney Shield to add in here. No? Ito yung biblical na parang bibig natin dyan. One of the parang when God presented His case against Israel, and not only during the time of Moses, pero you know, yung consistent na, na characteristic ng, ng, ng nasyon na ito na pinili ni God is that they easily forget. There are a people who easily forget. And I think um, that's true. Nakikita ko yan sa atin. Ang daling makalimot. Yung nga yung sinabi ni Ian na parang um, when, they were in the, when, when they were in the wilderness, ang sabi nila, how they miss the cucumbers, they miss the spices of Egypt. Pero nalimutan nila na bago nila makain yun, ilang whips at ilang lashes muna yung kailangan nilang punin. And how they had no right as people. And how they were treated as subhumans. And how they were not uh, a nation. They were just slaves to this nation. So, ang daling makalimot, ang daling tumingin doon sa maganda, pero nalimutan mo yung totoong picture, yung totoong buong, yung totoong buong kwento. And I feel na bilang bayan, obligasyon nating mga Kristiyano na ipaalala sa mga tao na, guys, andito tayo dati, ito yung sitwasyon natin dati. Huwag natin kalimutan kung gano'ng ka-gracious si God sa atin. And how we have been what? glorified as a nation in some way kasi we we were the ones who revolution parang nagkaroon tayo ng revolution na bloodless no the bloodless revolution and uh, ano ba yung kanta nila doon uh, handog ng Pilipino sa mundo di ba it was our contribution to the world that hey we can have social change without the shedding of blood but of course to to be correct about this may mga nagshed na ng blood like sila nino yung mga yung mga countless and faceless na individuals na, na nagbigay ng buhay, no? parang gisingin yung bayan. Um, but yes, we have shown that, that, that there can be a movement, there can be a peaceful movement. At sana wag natin kalimutan yan. I was just reading a comment by one of my friends na parang, I think if we allow history to repeat again, no? uh, titignan tayo na nakakatawa ng mundo. Kasi how we have cradled back tong, tong, um, the, the family who has... Um, who has stolen so much from us, not just our resources, but our history, our memories, our art as people. Um, I think kailangan talaga natin pwestohan yun. Ngayon, lalo na for millennials, for us, ang hirap eh. Kasi ano ba talaga yung tinitingnan natin moving forward? San ba talaga natin gusto kasing makarating? At sa natin gustong dalhin yung bayan natin or yung sarili natin or tayo sa community, di ba? So, and aside from that, what will propel us to go there? So, siguro yung mga values of perseverance din, siguro, if, if we'll, we'll, we can take yes. note of that. And going back to yung mga stories din, yung mga sumama sa end sa revolution, sobrang tapang kasi nila. Pero iba naman din kasi yung context nun, di ba? So, iba rin yung context natin ngayon. Iba na rin yung... Um, yung ginagalawa natin na na like let's say platforms di ba so but but how are we going to persevere even in the difficult times so uh, ako while well, you're sharing your biblical reflections um for us not to be like the Israelites nung nung panahon nung panahon nila so san tayo titingin so dapat may titingnan kasi tayo otherwise um ang daling mag tama na o oh, hirap give up na lang din muna tayo or post na lang din muna tayo ngayon. When in fact, um, ang dami nang nangyayari that could really repeat history. And this is not the time for us to slow down or to stop. So I just want to add something to that, Atorne. Sinabi mo na perseverance. A lot of people are parang losing hope sa democracy that we have parang feeling nila hindi naman it's not working and i think i agree with you authority na you know we are such a young democratic nation wala ba tayo sa katiting ng tagal ng bawa ng us ng tagal-tagal na nilang democratic nation pero kita din natin how fragile their democracy was during the insurgents no so i feel na tama ka kailangan nating magpersevere as uh, we move uh, as people na we we're trying to create a just and humane society where people really experience freedoms no so I, I I I resonate with that very much, Atty. Salamat, salamat sa point na yan. So yes, press forward and yet persevere as you press forward. So maybe at this point, I just want to ask you guys. Um, we're 
actually airing this podcast ngayon February where we all know that we will celebrate uh, the anniversary again of uh, EDSA 1, People Power Revolution 1. So, um, maybe your uh, last statement no sa mga kagaya natin na millennials na ayaw nang maulit yung nangyari noon pero minsan sinasabihan ng Ay, ano ba alam nyo? Wala kayong alam. So, anong gusto ninyo? Well, maybe, maybe what's your message for our fellow millennials ngayong uh, araw na ito? Let's go with uh, Pastor Ian first. Uh, for for everyone. I guess not just for millennials. Um, let us uh, let us look forward. Yan, unang-una siguro. Let us look forward without without forgetting our past lessons. Um, Huwag natin hayaan na, na maulit yung mga pagkakamali natin dahil and hindi lang naman kasi dahil sa sa ano mas masama yung dati you know? hindi lang dahil doon pero isipin rin natin yung neighbors natin isipin natin yung mga yung mga naghihirap isipin natin yung mga yung mga maaapektuhan kasi to be honest parang kahit sinong presidente will if if ano ka if meron kang kaya if may pinag-aralan ka uh, kaya mo mag-survive with any presidente eh. meron kang uh, meron kang way of getting a job uh, pero for for majority of the people pag bumagsak yung economy pag uh, uh, walang walang ano walang 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 tam, pa, hindi tama ang pag-manage ng ng public funds ng ng health ng ano ng SSS mo ng ng field health na uh, na binubulsa lang uh, kung may kung mayroon kang regular salary kaya mo pero pag yung iba hindi nila kakayanin yan eh so we we must think about this uh, in a, in in a way na kasama yung yung mga yung mga madadamay yung mga maghihirap yung mga yung mga uh, yung yung freedom natin kasama na rin doon syempre yung 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 pag-censor ng ating ng ng, ng ating media uh, at uh, at iba pang mga mga hindi ko siguro maiisip lahat kung ano yung mga repercussions di ba pero tignan natin yun uh, tignan natin wag lang natin tignan yung sarili natin ha? Uh, it will pass after this president. Ganyan. Diba? Tignan natin yung mga madadamay at yung mga, yung mga magiging biktima. Siguro dun sa mga listeners natin ngayon, sa mga millennials and maybe the younger ones, um, it's important for us to really take note of the lessons that we we learned from what happened in our history. Ah, earlier, hindi sinasabi ni Ian diba, na hindi lang naman because doon sa mga pangit na nangyari. Because to be honest, aminin naman natin, yung history naman natin also offered us good points. So baka merong mga nakikinig sa atin na baka sabihin napaka, napaka inclined naman ng discussions natin. But to be fair, may mga magagandang nangyari. There are things that worked in the past and there are things that did not work. So what is important for us to take note? Ano yung mga things na hindi nag-work at hindi applicable at hindi na dapat i-apply sa panahon natin ngayon? I think yun yung mas mahalaga nating pagtuunan ng pansin. Yung mga hindi nag-work, those serve as guidelines for us para hindi na tayo bumalik doon. But at the same time, meron mga bagay rin or lessons na kailangan um, i-take note natin paano natin gagamitin for us to propel our nation forward. So, yun. Um, I want to to also remind everyone na as we delve into our history, maybe we could also have open mind. Um, ang hirap kasi pag may biases na tayo, di ba? So, that would probably help for us to be able to be more holistic in terms of arming ourselves with the historical context na pinag-uusapan natin. Maging bukas yung isip natin na makinig. So to our fellow millennials and to the younger ones, um, subukan muna natin maging bukas, mag-isip at makinig. Tapos tsaka natin pagtagpi-tagpiin and i-apply dun sa current 
uh, his or current period natin kung ano yung mga natutunan natin from from the history that we had so i guess that would be important otherwise kasi pag meron na tayong leanings um ang hirap ng magano eh mag filtered na lahat ng mababasa natin ng pakikinggan natin so yon take note of what work and let's apply what work dun sa current situation or time natin Ako naman siguro yung aking iiwan sa ating mga viewers at sa ating mga audience is um, sabi natin, wala tayong historical context. And sabi din natin kanina, um, madaling makalimot sa history. Naalala ko lang yung um, you know, picking up from yung, yung flow ng example kanina din ni Pastor Ian, yung sa, 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 sa Egyptian history ng Israelites. Naalala ko sa Deuteronomy how they would educate the children. Kasi wala din historical context yung mga yun eh, yung mga lumaki na sa promised land. Pero meron silang Jewish style of education. And paano yun? They would talk about what God has done for them uh, in the dining table, uh, during dinner. Uh, sabi nga, uh, you bind it around your neck, you put it over your forehead, tapos you put it on your doors, te, ay, on your on your, uh, on your your doors. Meron sa mga, sa Jewish families, meron silang parang maliit na parang uh, pahaba siya ng men- metal na nilalagay nila sa hamba ng pintuan. And before they leave the house or as they enter the house, they would touch that. They would remember the Ten Commandments. They would remember how God has saved them from the Egyptians. And I think mahalaga yon. na oo nga wala nga kami noong panahon na yon. pero hindi dapat mawala sa kamalayan namin yon. kung lagi ninyong pinapaalala sa amin na ganito yun, ito yun, na, na in many ways, um, I, I I don't want to sound too religious now, but even sociologists would say that this is the only movement where it's led by a religious figure, di ba? Um, so, I think may kamay talaga ng Diyos, yung Edsa One. At hindi natin yun madidiskwentohan, hindi natin yun ma- maalis. And I hope na maipasa yon sa atin. Yung kwento ng, ito ay kalayaan na binigay ng Diyos sa atin at pangalagaan dapat natin to At yun nga, wag, wag kalimutan, ikwento habang kumakain, pag-usapan, uh, habang, habang, habang nagda-drive, no? lalo na pag may mga anak na kayo, nasa EDSA kayo, alam mo ba, anak, napunuto ng mga tao dati. You know, simple things like that, that's really how you pass yung consciousness. That's really how you you embed it in the consciousness of, of younger folks. So I hope na, um, Na yes, totoo 'yun. Uh, hindi kami dapat mabilis tumalon na magsabi na bakit ganito ka, bakit ganito kayo noon or or ito 'yung nangyari noon kasi wala nga talaga kami doon. Pero at the same time, kailangan din namin na natulungan niyo talaga kami na mag- 'wag 'yun mawala sa kamalayan namin, lalo na 'yung mga mahahalagang kwento noon. So yes. Um and also thank you for your um final final words at Tony Chill at final words ni Pastor Ian. Maraming maraming salamat for joining us uh, tonight. No, It's very important that we have you in this conversation. And as Pastor Ian has said, hindi lang naman to para sa mga millennials, pati sa mga Gen Zs na napagbibintangan ng na ating historical context. Ayan. So, because this is a show for younger folks, meron tayo mga chummy questions. Ayan. So, mga, ano lang, mga, mga fun questions lang before we leave. So, first question. Kung pwede kang pumili ng character sa Encanto. By the way, napanood niyo na ba yung movie na Encanto? Oo. <laughs> o sige. Siguro para makarelate ang lahat. Whether Lord of the Rings or um, Harry Potter. Ayan. Kung pwede kang pumili sa either Harry Potter franchise or Lord of the Rings franchise para mag-time travel papunta sa Edsa One, sino ang isasama mo? Kung makaka-time travel tayo ng Edsa One at pwede kang magbitbit ng character from Harry Potter or from uh, from from uh, Lord of the Rings, sino ang bibitbitin mo and why? Wala, wala <laughs> sa movie yung character na favorite ko. Pero oh, kung, kung, kung sa movie, uh, si ano si Samwise. Oh. Bakit si Samwise Gamgee? Kasi siya yung someone who really who is really concerned for ano diba, serving his ano si, his friend and i think kailangan ng mga ganun sa sa history natin sa na, na, na yung kasi ang madalas na ano natin na ang alam natin sa history is the big figures the leaders and sa edsa diba parang ganyan mm-hmm. mayroong mga leaders diyan na mga pero 
in reality, hindi naman kanila yung EDSA. Eh. It's for those who are uh, who are on the streets. It's for those who are hindi lang hindi lang nagi hindi lang hindi lang isang tao ang 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 EDSA. So yeah, some some people like like some wise who doesn't need the the recognition, uh, but is there to 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 serve. Sino ba? Ah, kung pwedeng pumili ng character na pwede isama sa EDSA One, yes. ano? Si Hermione, tama? Hermione Granger, no? Yes. Uh-huh. Sab- sabi dun sa research ko, nag-research ko for the comic question, sabi, siya daw yung ano, um, uh, she's level-headed, book smart, and always very logical. Throughout the series, she uses the skills of a librarian and teacher to gather the information necessary to defeat Voldemort. So, uh-huh. kaya siya yung isasama ko. Oh, get nyo na. <laughs> Yes, reliable. At saka, right, may, may, li- may librarian skills. Librarian. So, gusto mo maipapasa. Ang galing. Yes. Archival skills. Change, change character. Oh, si Voldemort na lang isasama. <laughs> oh, sige. Ako, sino kaya? Um, hmm. Kasi nung nabasa ko yung yung question na isip ko naman encanto talaga dahil na panood ko siya. So sige, ang isasama ko ay si Bruno kasi he's the one gifted with insight. So much so na si Bruno, parang prophet yan eh. Inaayawan nila or na, na, parang naging well, hindi na siya ginanish pero he kind of like self-banished. <laughs> siya na nila yun yan ang sarili niya kasi nga because of his insight, parang negative yung yung dala ng insight niya. And Um, I feel like we need people like Bruno who has an insight to the truth and who are not afraid to say it even if it means that it will be discomfort for them. So yeah, ako sa, sa akin si Bruno. Sabihin ko sana si Luisa kasi sikat na sikat dyan. Siya yung muscle girl. No? Si Heidi Lee, <laughs> si Luisa. Pero si Bruno na lang muna ngayon. Okay, question number two. Ito super charming ito. Sana hindi kayo nag-research dito. Yung ano lang, biglang ano lang, spontaneous na answer lang. Paano magmahal ang isang millennial? Dadaan niya sa EDSA traffic. <laughs> Para mga two hours sila magkasama. <laughs> ang ganda nun. Ang ganda nun. Related pa rin. Ako naman, sige, relate ko din ng konti sa EDSA. Ang millennial, pag nagmahal, parang mga nagrarally sa EDSA, pinaninindigan, pinaglalapan. Naisip ko, ano, ano yan, uh, similar related matapang, hindi nagigive up, nagpe-persevere. Okay. So, our time has come to an end. Maraming maraming salamat, Attorney Chill, Pastor Ian, for joining us in our show and sharing your insights with us. We'd love to hear your thoughts on tonight's episode. For those watching through Facebook or YouTube, kindly leave your messages on the comment section. Also, don't forget to follow us on social media to get the latest updates, especially on our next episode. Hanggang sa muli, paalam!